Hello all of you lovely people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and today I want to talk to you about comic book villains, or more specifically, about absolutely brutal ones. Now across the years, comic books have been no stranger to villains who push the envelope when it comes to chaos and killing. But you know what? There has to be the cream of the crap and so that's why this list exists. So let's take a look at some bad boys and lasses that absolutely kicked our asses, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 most brutal comic book villains. Number 10. Thanos While it's quite hard to separate the sheer power of some of the more intergalactic and otherworldly beings in the realms of comic books, what gives Thanos the edge over so many similar villains is the cruel and twisted measures that he's willing to take in order to get the job done. Many often compare Thanos to Darkseid or Galactus. Yet the Mad Titan has a brutal side that makes him stand out above those peers. Not only is Thanos intent on domination and voyages of conquest, but he's utterly ruthless as he looks to achieve these goals. This is somebody who has wiped out countless thousands of innocent people across the galaxy, and somebody who dropped a whole bunch of nuclear weapons on his home planet of Titan. Thanos is also responsible for killing his mother and father, and for causing such pain and suffering to his many children. And while it may be easy to think of the torment and agony that Thanos has caused for Gamora and Nebula, that's not taking into account the countless other offspring who Thanos has brutally murdered. Number 9. Judge Death you could probably guess that somebody's not a good dude if they have the word death in their name, and that is indeed the case of 2000 AD's Judge Death. The leader of the sinister Dark Judges, Sidney, yes, that is actually his real name, is one of the most despicable villains in comic book history. Positioned as Judge Dredd's greatest nemesis, Judge Death is a chilling visage and always has evil intentions in mind. Judge Death has been a very scary presence since his formative years, where the young Sidney developed a fascination with the very concept of death. In fact, he became so obsessed with death that he began to view life and existence itself as being a crime. Now, due to this morbid viewpoint, Judge Death gleefully wiped out the entire population of Deadworld as a way to get his kicks. For you see, not only is Judge Death a horrible, murderous being, but he also likes to mock and quip his way through things as he's carrying out his atrocious acts. Number 8. Deathstroke when it comes to fear-inducing monikers, Deathstroke the Terminator is certainly an effective name to go by. For Slade Wilson, he's one of the most badass villains under the DC Comics banner, and he's a standout villain of modern-day comic books, period. Where Deathstroke is concerned, it's rarely personal, for his heinous acts are so often carried out purely for business reasons. A hired gun who commands the biggest of bucks, Wilson has a unique set of skills that many other no-good sorts are very eager to make use of. Slade is so efficient that he's one of the very few people who Batman struggles with in one-on-one -on -one combat. And given how the caped crusader is viewed as one of the very best hand-to-hand -hand fighters on the planet, that gives a further indication of just how good Deathstroke is at what he does. In terms of brutality, Slade has nuked an entire civilization, he's created more dead bodies than most, he's gleefully killed animals, abused his children, and had sex with a minor, Grim, all in order to complete whatever mission that he's been tasked with, which usually means a hefty payday for him and a lot of pain for everyone else. Number 7. Sabretooth the X-Men have faced off against so many different villains over the decades, but one that they have come up against time and again is Victor Creed, aka Sabretooth. Even when we thought that Sabretooth had finally bitten the bullet after Wolverine had decapitated him, it turned out that of course there was a clone, because why the hell not? While Sabretooth has caused major headaches for the X-Men as a whole, it's the aforementioned Wolverine who has been on the receiving end of Victor's most vicious and hard-hitting acts. And not being just content to directly attack Logan, Victor has also brutalized those closest to him as a way to truly hit him where it hurts. One of the main examples of Sabretooth being an uber bastard is his annual tradition of just trying to kill Wolverine for the hell of it, a tradition that began after Sabretooth killed Logan's partner Silver Fox on the old Knucklehead's birthday. And Thus, for every year since then, Sabretooth has targeted Wolverine's birthday as the one day of the year where he will go all out to cause him as much pain as possible. Arguably even worse than killing Silver Fox, though, is how Sabretooth manipulated Wolverine into killing Logan's own son, Dakin. Taking Dakin under his wing, Creed revealed how his plan all along was to pit father against son, with an endgame of Wolverine having to kill his own offspring. Eventually, a pained Wolverine finally would, as he made the heartbreaking call to drown his own son after the bodies began piling up. Number 6. Bane 
It's rare to see Batman ever get truly bested, but Bane took things to an entirely other level when he not only got the better of Batman, but he absolutely broke him as well. Bane's arrival in 1993's Nightfall is one of the all-time greatest villain debuts in comic history. While his hulking size led readers to see him as a physical threat, Bane was quick to showcase that he was more than just your regular beefed-up bad boy. To do that, he put a calculated plan together that would see some of Arkham Asylum's most infamous names released out into the wild, all with the intent of wearing down Batman by sheer number of rogues before he finally stepped in to finish the job. And finish it he did by breaking his bat. Of course, it's all well and good to have done one major act of brutality 27 years ago, but more recent years have seen Bane's brutal edge well and truly brought back. If manipulating the impending marriage between Bruce Wayne and Selina Carr wasn't enough emotional torment for the Cape Crusader, the masked madman went one step further and snapped Alfred's neck last year. Yes, that's right, as in Bane killed Bruce Wayne's long-standing father figure, which is probably one of the most brutal things that you could ever do. Number 5. Magneto of all of the characters featured in this article, Magneto is likely the most complicated and multi-layered of the bunch. For while the Master of Magnetism has at times been a hero and an ally of the X-Men, he has carried out some unspeakable acts during his time as a full-on villain. Even when Magneto is classified as a villain within the pages of Marvel Comics, there is often sometimes some good intentions behind his actions because at the crux of it, all he wants is the best for his mutant brothers and sisters. It's just that Eric has a habit of going very extreme in his methods to obtain this equality. For example, he once took a humble paperclip and forced it through the body of a doctor, manipulating it through her body until she finally succumbed to the pain and died. And let's not forget that he also ripped out Wolverine's adamantium skeleton from his very body, which um, probably would be more than a little bit painful. But that's just the start of it, because other notable acts of depravity from Magneto include cutting off Scalp Hunter's arms and legs, ripping Apocalypse in half, and killing his own son, Quicksilver. Yeah. Number 4. That Yellow Bar if you know the right people in the right places, you can get away with far more than the average bear can. And when it came to the sleazy back alleys of Sin City, there's all sorts of vices that can be appeased. Referred to through the majority of his appearances in Frank Miller's Sin City as that yellow bus, Rourke Jr. doesn't just have a penchant for torture and murder. The number of people dead at his hands is said to be in the hundreds, but Junior has an even more eerie and chilling edge to him for the fact that he is also a rapist and a paedophile. Thankfully, 1996's That Yellow Bar story saw Junior finally get his comeuppance. That comeuppance came in the form of lawman John Hartigan, who, after spending eight years behind bars thanks to being blamed for that bar crimes, tracked Junior down and literally ripped his balls off before beating him to death. The bar end came amidst him torturing the 19-year-old Nancy Callahan, a girl he previously kidnapped when she was just 11, and the brutal death that he received was definitely justice served. Number 3. The Joker The Clown Prince of Crime is the perfect example of how you don't need to be an all-powerful intergalactic being for you to be a godlike figure when it comes to being evil. Depending on what canon you're sticking to, the Joker has a rap sheet that reads like very few others. From skinning a man alive, to blowing up a school full of children, to crippling Barbara Gordon, to murdering Jim Gordon's wife Sarah, to even destroying the entirety of Metropolis, he's done a fair few bad things in his time. Then there's of course the case of him brutalizing poor Jason Todd with a crowbar before exploding a building that he was in and sending the second Robin to the afterlife. Well, for a long old time that was. In short, they don't come much more vicious, vindictive, and violent than the Joker. Number 2. Carnage Long before he bonded with a symbiote and became the maniacal Carnage, Cassidy was already a full-blown serial killer. Cletus was actually born in prison, and the early alarm bells were ringing loud and clear when he pushed his grandmother down some stairs to her death. And then even more worrying was his decision to torture and murder his mother's dog with a drill. And to think, all of this was before he became Carnage. Upon bonding with the symbiote, with Carnage often being pegged as the offspring of Venom, Cassidy's intentions became even more nefarious, which in turn put him on the radar of Spider-Man and made him one of old Webhead's most fearsome and outright scary foes. Carnage is the sort of villain who would think nothing of tossing a toddler out of a top floor window if the mood took him, and that makes him such a dangerous prospect for Spidey, and any other person that gets in his way. And number one, Wily Pete. 
Of all the rogues and rascals included in this feature, Wily Pete is likely the least well-known of the bunch. But while he may not have quite as much mainstream popularity as other characters, he makes up for that by being one of the most vile entities in comic book history. A big bad of Adam Warren's empowered title, Pete is a fire-based being who carries out some unspeakable things. He's the lowest of the low, with quite ridiculous powers thrown into boot. And in terms of those powers, he's essentially a living ball of nuclear-level fire. While having that power attributed to a villain is never going to be great for the rest of existence, what makes it worse is the fact that he's a full-on sexual predator in addition to being a callous murderer. Due to the sheer extremes of his abilities, anyone who comes into contact with Pete usually ends up being turned into a pile of ash. He himself has revealed, though, how he likes to, well, rape people and listen to their screams and flaming anguish as a way to get himself off. Now you can see why, even if you've never heard of him, why he is definitely worth including on this list. But even this isn't the end of it for him, as he's been known to eat people as well, and often targets superpowered sorts as his victims because he feels that they put up more of a fight than regular people. Yikes. And there we go, those were the 10 most brutal comic book villains. Please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, as well as any other suggestions that you would have for your own version of this list. If you want to chat to me further about anything to do with comic books, TV, films, video games, whatever else, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. 